To render the shot, you will reference the USD files into the Solaris stage, then add a backdrop. Solaris is a Houdini context that uses lop nodes to set up a USD scene graph. Next, you will import the fur, then add and position a camera and a light. The Karma renderer will then be invoked to create a preview render of the shot, then render out the animated sequence. Let's begin by changing to a new desktop called Solaris. Now right now we're pointing at the object level. We want to change this to point to a stage, and currently it's empty. Stage gives us a, a, a fresh place to start bringing in the elements that we want to render. We're going to start by putting a reference node down. We're going to set its primitive path to slash care for character slash and then the name of the file. We're going to go get the file. We're going to get the walk USD file. And you'll see that there we are with the animated walk cycle uh, that we exported earlier. And we're going to set our timeline to go from uh, 10 to 50 because that's what we're going to want to render out and we'll just uh, work from there. So here we have the scene graph. This is um, the US, how USD organized things. You see inside there we have all of the different parts of the character. Because we named those different parts, added name attribute, they come in separately and that will help us in the assigning of our elements. So we're going to put a material library node down and we're going to go to the material palette and we're going to add some materials. So we'll put a principal uh, shader down. Actually, we're going to put five of them down. And we're going to set them all up to, um, to be the different materials we need for the character. Um, so let's just quickly um, rename this. Um, so we're just going to fur dude, body, mat. Um, then we're going to do one for the eyeball. Uh, fur dude, eyeball, mat. And then we're going to do the eyelids because they have their own texture map. Uh, and then we're going to go and we're going to do the teeth, which we're going to make sort of like an off, off, off white. And then we're going to do the uh, tongue and gums, which will have a reddish color. So you'll see that in the scene graph, once we've added these in into the material library, they're also part of the scene graph here. And what we can do is let's select the body one. We're going to set the base color to 111. That's always best when you're assigning a texture map. And then we're going to go in and we're going to go to slash text and bring in skin color JPEG. Now, this doesn't assign it. This just creates it. Uh, we'll do the assigning uh, in the next step. We're going to set the roughness to 0.5, reflectivity to 0. This is mostly underneath the fur anyway. Um, and we're going to do the same with the eye color. Uh, we'll set uh, the eyelids again, 111 is best. And the same numbers for there. And uh, oh, we forgot to set 111 for the eyeball. Um, and this time we'll leave the reflectivity on because the eyeballs will have a little more reflectivity. Uh, for the teeth, we're going to create sort of an off yellow color. This doesn't have a texture map, we're just going to have an off yellow, and reflectivity is good there. And the last one, the tongue, we'll just make that, and gums, we'll make that red. So if we go back to the um, to the Solaris level, uh, we can add a, an assign material lop down. And this will allow us to make associations between the different body parts and the materials. And that's how we'll assign them. So we've got the body, uh, and we can put that into where it says primitives. And then we can get the material path. So we can do that by also dragging the body material over there. So that's one way of getting it, and that works uh, perfectly well. Uh, another way to do it is to um, click on that arrow and then go into 3D view, select, for instance, the eyeball, press enter, and there we go, and select this, which brings up this pop up menu. And from there, we get the eyeball mat. And we bring that over and press OK. And that assigns it. And so we've got to keep pressing plus here, and we've got to keep doing, uh, we'll do the eyelids. They're the, make sure the two of them are selected so they can assign more than one thing with the material there. And then we'll go in, get the materials, and get the eyelid. And we can do the same with the teeth and the, and the gums. Now, because the teeth and uh, there's a fair a number of elements there, uh, what we'll do is we'll select all of those here in the in the um, in the scene graph, and then we'll add a plus here, and then we'll drag all of those over to be primitives there, 
and then we can assign that. So when we're dealing with a bunch of elements, it might not be easy to pick in the scene view. We can also use the scene graph to help us again. And then the gums and the tongue will be our last one. And so again, uh, gums and tongue, drag those over to the primitives, and then we will assign the material path. Now, if we're building a larger USD pipeline, exactly how we configure these will be would be very uh, important to get perfectly right. Uh, we're being a little bit uh, more casual about it here because we're just trying to render out a shot. Uh, when using Solaris, you can be heavy duty USD or you can just be a, a tool to help you get the shot out and we're just using it to get the shot out. Uh, so now we're gonna merge in um, another node called a SOP import and this is going to allow us to bring the fur from the other part of the Houdini scene. Now we could have exported, cached out the fur and brought it in, but we're going to do it this way to give us some flexibility to uh, tweak the grooming uh, down the line and also to explore, um, you know, just to get the fur exactly the way we want it. So now we're going to create a, another material, a hair material, and we're going to assign that um, we're going to put secondary reflections. We don't want a lot of secondary reflections. So we're going to darken that and maybe a little lighter on the tip. Um, and just a little lighter on the tip there. Uh, other than that, we'll leave the default colors. Uh, once we've got that, uh, we can again um, add one of these. And we're going to bring, we're going to go into the SOP import and Actually, we want to be a little more organized about this. So we're going to, under the primitive, we're going to put it under the character. And then we're going to name that hair. And then that will show up in the scene graph. So even when we're down here, uh, there's the, you, you're you going to see the hair up at the top now under character. And we can take that curve zero uh, primitive and assign that here. That's all the fur. And then we're going to go in and grab the hair material and assign that. Now we're not going to see that in the viewport here, uh, but this is where we can sort of uh, bring in other elements. But before we do that, um, let's create a bit of a backdrop uh, just to help uh, anchor everything that we're doing. So we're just going to put down a, um, a grid node, which uh, is, creates what's called a SOP create. And inside there, um, we can just manipulate this grid that we have uh, to get what we want. So we're going to make it a little bigger. Uh, we're going to then add a bend sop underneath it. And this will have a, an intensity of, uh, let's bend it at 75. You know, sort of going the wrong way, but we can fix that in a second. Uh, we're going to go capture origin negative 10 and direction negative one. And that gives us sort of the backdrop that we're looking for and a length of 10 to sort of soften that out a little bit. Then we'll put a subdivide node down um, and that'll just allow us to add a little bit more detail. So once we have that, um, we might want to rotate it. Let's try 45 degrees. Um, let's get in there and look at the, f the walk cycle. Um, oh, he seems to be walking the other direction. So you know what? We're going to change that and we're going to make that negative 45, I think, might work better. Um, just so that the backdrop's behind him uh, as as Ferdude is walking. Excellent. So the next thing we want to do is set up a, a, a camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the fur just to make it easier to, to pan around and get this working. And then what we'll do is we'll just um, set up the start frame and what we can do uh, to set up a camera is sort of get the cam the view the way we want it here in the 3d view and then we'll be able to when we do the camera we can control click uh, to get the camera to pick up that view so we control click on the camera and there we go so now it's picked that up now if we still aren't happy with the results we can press the little lock icon there and continue to tweak and explore um, the possibilities here. So if we go back to frame one, okay, we wanna make that a little bit over there. Okay, that's getting in the in the zone. Maybe we just wanna see a little more of the front of the character at this point. So there we go, move that over, 
check the beginning and end frames and once we have what we want then we're ready to go so we can bring the fur back and once we've brought that back now we can uh, invoke the karma render which is a special render designed to see usd oh before we do that we of course need a light um, so we turned the unlock off, tumbled around to get where we'd like the light to come from, and we're going to put control click on the area light uh, to put an area light into the scene. And you'll see that it's looking down uh, at the character, uh, and then the light has some various properties of its own. You can try maybe a, a little more intensity, uh, 1.5, there we go. Now go back and look at the camera. Now we've got our light, we've got our elements, um, and we can now go in and invoke the karma um, render. This is a Hydra delegate, which means it's designed to work uh, with USD and render USD directly, and it's built into the viewport here in, in Houdini. And there I've just turned on the denoiser, uh, which is the, the little round button at the bottom, and that just resolves the noise a little bit faster and gets us a, a good result um, while we're working. That's based on NVIDIA. Um, there's also an Intel one, but the NVIDIA one, um, you need to have an NVIDIA card. So now we can go in and tinker around with the light, with the intensity, explore some different possibilities and get what we want. Now, once you've got everything looking the way you need it and you want to see what the sequence looks like, uh, you can set up a Karma node. And this is where you have render settings. Normally your render settings are under, for the viewport, or you have to press D to get your display options and then you can set them up. But we're gonna go, uh, not worry about that, we're gonna render to disk. So delete channels, we're gonna do a start of 10 and end of 50. And We want to change the name of this um, to walk. We'll put it in a walk directory and fur dude walk underscore walk. And then the dollar F4 is uh, the numbering and EXR is the format that we're, we're sending out. Now uh, we're gonna go down to the filter, the denoiser, has to be put on uh, independently here, separate from what's going on in the viewport if we want to include that in the render. Um, and then once we're ready with that, we can press render to disk. And it's gonna go off and um, think about that. Now, uh, there you'll see there's our feedback about it render and we're just going to, well, fade over to where we have it finished. Now we'll load the disks, uh, load the files from disk, and this is where we're going to use mplay to uh, take a look at this walk cycle and see what the final result is. And there we go. So now we've got him walking, you see a little bit of the dynamics in the fur, and there we go, mission accomplished. So this is, so far in this lesson, you've rigged the character, you've, you've, you've set up the fur, you've set up the materials and, and rendered, so you've taken this character through the complete pipeline, which is great. Now, of course, you never get it right the first time, you wanna go back and make changes. So one thing we can do when it comes to the fur is we can pin this viewport uh, in Solaris on the stage and then take the rest of our network and go back to, let's say, fur grooming and tinker with the, with the grooming. Now it's just, my computer's a little slow on resolving, so just go, hum oh, I can just go back to GL, get it where I want it, um, and then uh, kick, kick Karma back in. Okay, so now that that's there, what I can do is go to the object level, and we can go back into our grooming, and now before we do that, let's go to the sim node, turn off the load from disk. So this will allow us to make changes and they'll flow right through uh, towards Solaris. So we're going to go uh, to the guide process and let's change the maximum length to 0 0.08. And um, it sort of went a little wacky there, but uh, I think we just need to jiggle that a little bit. Go back to frame one. Uh, going back to frame one will allow us to, uh, to just do the tweaking and then later we can play it back. Um, increase the the bending uh, on that to go a little bendier with the fur 
a uh, lot more frizz, uh, get that in there, and then maybe tighten up, um, tighten up the clumping. So we can go in and, um, oh, let's add a little more frizz, yep. And then the hair clumping, we're just gonna basically, you know, put uh, more of them in there by reducing the clump size. And there we go. So now he's looking a little more groomed, uh, a little tighter uh, hairstyle. Um, and that can come back and we would be able to render that. We could also go in, for instance, the materials and maybe go to the fur and let's explore some different colors for his fur. So maybe we want to make him a little more purplish, uh, more colorful monster. Uh, and that's certainly an option as well. And then once we have all that, uh, we can go back to our camera and we would be able to re-render um, maybe at a higher resolution, uh, maybe increase the peep pixel samples, maybe go, we could go like 128 uh, and then sort of go from there. So there you go. You've completed the fur dude uh, exercise. Uh, congratulations. And I hope this is your first step into enjoying KinFX and what it can do um, for you.